Thank you. Um, I take um, a lot of things that everyone says seriously. And when you say that a whole food plant-based diet makes sense, I avoid animal products, I avoid sugar, but for whatever reason, you know, tonight I ate, I had my dinner and I had sauerkraut with it and it came from the store, it definitely had salt in it. Where do we stand with salt? I feel like somehow in my mind, I kind of make it like, well, salt's like not that serious. Um, I don't, obviously no one wants to have a heart attack. What is, you know, I'm totally militant about animal products. I'm totally militant about sugar. But salt seems to, I just don't take it that seriously. What What is the reality about eating salt for people that completely are committed to avoiding disease? Well, what I would say is there's a difference between somebody who has a heart condition like congestive heart failure or high blood pressure, hypertension that's you know difficult to control, uncontrolled. There's more science to say that salt contributes to issues in those specific disease states. But for a healthy person, I think what we hear people say is about somewhere around 70% of salt in the American diet comes from processed foods. And so if you've eliminated <coughs> processed foods uh, because you're trying to eat whole food plant-based, that's you know 70% of the salt battle for the most part. Granted, certainly if you took the salt shaker and dumped a lot on there, you could still get to very high levels of, of salt. But um, I think that there is conflicting opinions uh, in regards to once you've eliminated the processed foods, you're re- you know physically active, you're at your ideal body weight, you don't have hypertension, you don't have heart failure, how harmful is salt really going to be? I think it's a great question because there's probably a good subset of people, a pretty good percentage of people where it will not cause as much harm. And I hear a lot of lifestyle medicine physicians say, if that is what is going to make the food more palatable for you and allow you to stick to whole food plant-based, then, then so be it. Uh, better than going back to uh, processed foods or more animal-based foods in order to help you, you know, to maintain whatever. So um, I think that you'll see a lot of, uh, you just got to play it individually because there's a lot of individual variability. If you seem like a salt sensitive person, then uh, you should, you should avoid it or or reduce the amount that you take, but there's going to be a percentage of people where it's, it's not as harmful. And I know the McDougall program, Dr. Lim can probably speak to, um, has a, has a, an opinion about that too. Yeah, um, you know, in, in the McDougal program, we allow our patients to to use salt <laughs> um, because it it helps the food taste uh, better. Um, I think it increases their adherence, um, but we also, uh, you know, advise them to have the least amount possible to make the food enjoyable. And so, um, the word that I use again and again and again and again with my patients, whether it's salt you know, or, or whether it's, um, you know, that special treat on their grandkids birthday or whatever it is, is the word relationship. What is your relationship with that item? If I had something with added sugar for me, it doesn't trigger some bell in me. That's going to make me go off and binge for another person. That sugar is going to be like a glass of wine for an alcoholic. And it's going to cause them to go on some air, right? So the, the relationship for each person with different things is going to be different. And so that's an invitation for people to understand themselves better, really be honest about the relationship with things and whether it needs improvement. And part of what factors into a relationship is your own personal history, medical history, as, as, as Dr. Lohm said. So if you are someone with refractory blood pressure, despite eating, a, let's say, a 100% plant-based diet, why not give it a try for one, two months to see what it might be like to be zero added sodium and see if that's enough to have that breakthrough in that high blood pressure. And I have seen that happen. And then just don't whine that the person next to you is able to sprinkle salt on their food and um, enjoy good blood pressure. So I know, again, it's not like some concrete rule, but I think the idea is um, to establish a healthy relationship based on your own unique personal medical history. Thank you. So I was just going to weigh in uh, in agreement that salt sensitivity is really important to understand. Uh, But and there's some people who say, oh, I ate a salty thing and my feet swole up and my blood pressure went up and other people, it doesn't bother them at all. Some of that might be genetic. Uh, I know there's this uh, old theory for African-Americans to think of most African-Americans as being salt sensitive, that it had to do with the slave boats and the mortality of people who, who couldn't conserve sodium. I don't know if there's any credibility to that at all. We're, you know, 450 years later. But um, I would say that um, when you look at the PURE trial, uh, published about eight years ago, it was pretty, uh, 
it was pretty convincing that the best 24 hour urine sodium um, excretion with cardiovascular outcomes was four to five grams. That's 4,000 milligrams. And so the World uh, Heart Federation was in a big battle with the American Heart Association saying 1,500 milligrams. Our guidelines were saying 1,800 milligrams as a maximum for um, uh, for uh, people with hypertension, maybe 2,300 if you are have no diseases whatsoever. But I would say people need to just be observant uh, and I really like the idea of, of avoiding the processed food. You just don't get that much sodium. And I think people have to be cognizant of the one-to-one -one relationship between sodium and potassium. So if you're eating a massive amount of potassium, which a whole food plant-based diet uh, it had, contains, you do get a little bit of a pass on uh, a little bit of extra sodium. Uh, the last thing I should say is that when uh, Steve and I were both at Rush, we had a colleague, Rami, Gar uh, Rami um, Dukey, who did a heart failure study and showed unequivocally, and it was reproduced by other people, that a low sodium diet and heart failure actually increased mortality. It decreased symptoms, uh, edema, shortness of breath, and hospitalization, but was associated with increased mortality. So I'm not sure we know the final answer for any of those numbers. I can just say that there are a lot of good candidate genes for what the optimal amount is. Uh, I would say the best thing to do is to st stick to 15 to 1800 and don't have heart failure. <laughs> and just two qu two quick things that we mentioned processed food, but number two, if not tied for number one, is eating out mm -hmm. Be because they the restaurants have an interest in just pumping the sodium in, and people are get, guess what happens? They're going to consume more, right? We have passive overconsumption, so they're going to eat more than they otherwise would because it's tastier. Uh, and then number two, they're going to be thirsty as heck, and they're probably not going to be getting water. Mm -hmm. Um, so they're going to be getting soda. So there's definitely an interest in that. And so that, I mean, I, anytime I eat out, I'm, I'm plugging water, um, the rest of the night. So that's uh, processed food and eating out, you eliminate those and you just use the salt shaker on the own home cooked food. You're probably going to be in good shape. And then the second thing I'll say, which we have not touched upon at all tonight, but I think is hugely important is the psychology of eating. So my advice to you, Steve, uh, would be your sauerkraut is if your blood pressure is good and you're otherwise eating well, and you're just putting a little bit of sauerkraut to make that taste good, um, then my recommendation would be going forward, hopefully is to, you know, not worry about it too much and be able to really enjoy it as opposed to feel like, you know, you're doing something bad and feeling a little bit guilty, you know, because I have so many patients that are grappling with that. They're getting these recommendations from all over the place. And so they're eating something and they're feeling guilty about it. And so they're not even getting the enjoyment factor that we know has psychological and health benefits. <laughs>